Well, hi there. My name is Scott Duffy from softwarearchitect.ca. More than 80,000 students have chosen to learn topics such as Microsoft Azure from me. I am super appreciative of that. In this video, we're going to do a quick start, which means we're going to go into the Microsoft Azure portal and we're going to create a Windows web app, which is part of the app services using Microsoft Azure. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a Windows web app up and going so that you can deploy your custom code into it. Let's switch over to the portal. The URL is portal.azure.com. So this is the Microsoft Azure portal. I'm going to go over to the plus sign. Now we have a number of categories. One of them is web plus mobile and web app is the first option of the web and mobile category. It's also under getting started as the third one down. If we choose it, we're going to be brought into the settings tab. and We're going to start to create our Windows web app. So we give it a name. I'm going to call it Windows web app. Now you'll see that this is a fully qualified domain name in that it's got the dot Azure websites dot net. And so I'm going to be able to access this over the web based on this URL. I'm going to use my existing subscription. You may have a free plan or a MSDN subscription or your corporation or Visual Studio. I use pay as you go. This charges me every month. Can't use the word Windows in the resource group. That's a new one. Thank you. So resource group is a way of organizing your resources. For web apps, it's fairly straightforward. You're just going to create the web app. You can create one resource group that contains many web apps. But for virtual machines and networks and other things, you may want to have multiple resources grouped under one name. I'm going to create a new resource group for this. Now, I do have the choice between Windows and Linux. This video is about a Windows web app, and so we're going to choose Windows. Now, we do have the choice of where this Windows web app is going to get deployed. So the Windows web app is by default going to go into the uh, South Central US, which is a ch one that I chose. I have an existing web app, which is the free plan. Let me show you the pricing options and we can uh, we can choose. So let's create a ZSJD uh, web app. You can reuse the same names on multiple different things and Azure will take care of it as long as it's not the same type. So I can put this in any of Azure's 40 plus regions. I'm going to choose East US 2 and let's look at the pricing options. So Microsoft's offering you the ability to run your Windows web app on isolated hardware. That means there's no other person or tenant using this hardware. And so you're paying for that privilege for a one core, two core, four core isolated hardware. You're getting you know, $300 to $1,200 a month. This includes, um, you know, your, your networking, etc., like that, that becomes uh, a lot faster. The premium service is still pretty good. Now you will pray for this, but this includes uh, slots and traffic manager, custom domains based on, based on this type of pricing. You can see here that there's a V2 option as well as the V1 option. The V2 option is actually a bit cheaper, plus you get more memory. So it's hard to know why you'd want to choose the old one unless all of your other web apps are running on this and you want the consistency. Then when you go down to the standard plan, you don't get uh, the same number of slots and there's, there's less instances and, and less storage and stuff like that down to the basic plan where you get almost nothing. You can have traffic manager, you can have deployment slots, and they do also have a free plan and a shared plan even for as low as $11 a month. So you have a lot of different options depending on your needs. I'm just going to choose the S1 plan. Uh, it's, it's a standard plan, it gives me all the cool things, but I don't need the performance just yet because we're just testing out. I'm going to choose the S1 standard plan instead of the free plan that my uh, other app is running on. Now that's it. It's a one page set of settings. This is going to create me a web app. I'm going to pin this to my dashboard and click create. Now the thing about web apps is that you create them and they're empty. So you actually do need to deploy code. If you've got 
Microsoft Visual Studio. You can connect Visual Studio using the Azure plugin and then deploy your applications directly into this web app. One click, you click publish and it will do that. So this is going to take, it's very quick to create a web app because um, it's not, it's not like a virtual machine where it has to create networks and NIC cards and all these sort of things. It's going to create this for me fairly quickly and then I can uh, customize it. So that was quite quick. My web app is already created. We can see on this overview screen, the URL of our web app. I've got FTP username and I can FTP into the site and deploy my code using FTP. If I go down to application settings, I can see that I can choose a .NET framework version, PHP version, Python version, a Java if I want to install. These things are not installed by default. 32-bit versus 64-bit. So this is where all of your settings are when you deploy your app. You get all these extra things such as uh, SSL, custom domains, Azure to manage your backups. You can do a backup type of job. So go into, uh, here's how you create an Azure Windows web app. Uh, let me know how that goes for you.